As you probably know by now, Volkswagen recently admitted that they installed software on 11 million diesel vehicles worldwide to cheat on emissions tests. I was thinking, are they, you know, just going to issue a mass recall? Are they, you know, what does it imply for us? Or do we have just like a worthless vehicle on our hands now, which we can't sell, but yet, you know, we're not really supposed to drive it either. The so-called cheating device knows when a Volkswagen TDI is being emissions tested. According to published reports, the car's computer detunes the engine to comply with strict federal emission requirements. But here's the important part. When the car is not being tested and in daily driving, the engine produces more power and more pollution. We do disengage the traction control, which is a ESP or ASR or TCS for traction control system. Okay. And um, that is probably one of the things that how the car indicates that it's being emissions tested because we literally press, press the, the button for it to be notified that it's being emissions tested. At TFL, we asked ourselves a simple question. How much more power, if any, does the TDI produce in daily driving? To find out, we got our hands on a 2011 VW Jetta TDI, and I sent Andre to go test the front-wheel drive Jetta on an all-wheel drive dyno. Why an all-wheel drive dyno? Because we had the suspicion that with an all-wheel drive dyno, we could fool the car into thinking it was on the road. The results speak for themselves. We discover that the car makes both more power and more torque when it thinks it's on the road. How much more? Well, that's coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. This is Andre Smirnov reporting for the Fast Lane Car. And I'm here at Tobes Performance where they have an all-wheel drive dyno. And with me is a 2011 Jetta TDI. I brought a 2011 Volkswagen Jetta. TDI. Turbo, turbo diesel with the DSG okay. transmission. Is this car modified in any way? No, this car is 100% stock. Okay. Painfully stock. So Brian, uh, can you go over again how the dyno works? This is a Mustang dyno, and how does it work? It, work, mean, it works awesome. It works awesome? <laughs> yeah. And you can measure your 1200 horsepower Mitsubishi on yeah, it? Yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff okay. with it. What's nice about this is it's belt driven, so it's all connected at once. When we need to disconnect it and make it two wheel drive or four wheel drive, we literally hit a little a valve and it turns it on and off. So that's how we're making the changes of four wheel drive and you would see all the wheels run to two wheel drive. That's what's good about this dyno, they're okay. always linked together. In this first test, all four wheels are turning and thus the car thinks it's on the road. In other words, it assumes it is being driven in a daily situation and not being emissions tested. Under these conditions, we hypothesized that the Jetta's horsepower and torque should be very similar to the manufacturer's stated numbers, which are 140 horsepower and 236 pound-foot of torque. Let's find out what happened. So, uncorrected, you know, really at this level, yeah. it did 114 to the wheels, horsepower. Okay. okay. 214 torque. Okay. Corrected this elevation. Oh yeah. 138. Okay. 260 torque. As you can see when the dyno corrected for the fact that we're at a mile above sea level, the numbers were very similar to the manufacturer's stated numbers for the Jetta when it was new. All right, we've got the car set up in two-wheel drive mode here and uh, we're gonna give her a try. Now it looks like we're getting an error on the car telling us that we are in a different mode and I cannot accelerate. That looks like it shut off ABS. Brake is flashing. Let me try to get in the right gear here. All right, I would think that whatever it's done now, it has switched into a different mode. I'm having to ease into it so it doesn't downshift and then I floor it. And we get a full pull. Torque was down a little. Max power 112, I mean horsepower is almost exact. Torque dropped. 
Now you have to keep in mind that a engine works on a power curve. The maximum disparity between the two runs when the engine was at its peak, in other words, when it was running full out, was only two horsepower. However, when you line up the two graphs from the two dyno runs and you look at low range, mid range, and peak power, the biggest disparity we saw was a total of 15 horsepower and 32 pound foot of torque, and that is a significant number for a car like the Jetta. The dotted blue line was the second run? Yep, which would be in two wheel drive. So Dino run. The max, the peak was lower, obviously. Yep. And then the entire graph is a bit lower. Correct, Come in, came in a little slower. So here it lost. 243. So here. Still, it's all in that 30, 30 to 40 torque. So, we saw a definite difference between running the Volkswagen Jetta TDI with all four wheels spinning and just the front wheel spinning. 113. 15. Yeah, so 15 horsepower down in that RPM. Right. There was a definite difference in horsepower and torque in the lower RPM ranges to about 3000 RPM and then they peaked a little bit closer together but still there was a peak horsepower and about 30 foot-pounds of torque difference between the two runs. For this car that's a good amount of drop. So that's a significant change. We could not measure emissions nitrous oxides here. The irony of these test results is that current VW TDI owners are very happy with their cars. It's a, I mean, it's a great car. It's really fun to drive. It's fast. It's got really decent gas mileage. But while we weren't able to measure nitrous oxides, we did find a significant decrease in both torque and power, especially when the car thought that it was being emissions tested. Come back to TFLcar.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews and reports like this. So the result is actually really interesting. The 2010 Volkswagen TDI, the Jetta that we just saw on the emission tents dyno, passed with flying colors. It was under 1% in visual particulate emissions and the failing grade is above 35%. So according to this test, it's a really clean car. So what are the owner to think? Do I have a clean car? Do I have a dirty car? But the bottom line is, Volkswagen admitted fault and they will issue a retrofit or refitting to fix all of the affected cars. So owners should stay tuned for uh, a letter from Volkswagen specifying when the recall will happen and how to go about doing it.